we've, uh, we've been talking about wealth. We have uh, for the last few weeks we we have talked about the breast, uh, the blessing of Abraham. We have uh, looked at the different ways that uh, God intends to bless us and the things that He does. For us and today I just want to focus on something that I find very important maybe you have heard this said before that uh, Jesus talked about money more than anything else that he talked about I know it's always a sensitive topic in church because uh, you don't want to come to church and be asked for money or almost every time you go to church, they are talking about money and how they can get it uh, from your pockets. But you know the interesting thing about money? If our money problems were sorted out, 90% of our prayers would be obsolete. Now, let me give you a few, uh, just a few seconds to think about your prayers. If you had the kind of money you would want to have, how many of those prayers would still exist? And that's why it's important to talk about money, and especially in church, and from a, from a perspective that is wholesome, and from a perspective that is informed by our purpose in life. Because everything about our lives should rotate around the purpose for which we have been created. Let me ask us a question. And I'm not asking this question with, uh, with the confidence that I have the answer to it. If I gave you a million shillings today, what would you do with it? Anybody? Anybody, if I gave you a million shillings, what would you do with it? Yes. You'd start your dream business. Uh huh. Anyone else? Yes. You'd invest? Uh huh. Yes. Minus a hundred thousand, then the rest? Yes. Red soil plot. Bro, <laughs> uh -huh. What would you do with a million shillings? I'm an imesema pesa kidogo. It's confusing you. You're thinking it's, it's not enough to sort out your problems. Okay, let's up it a bit. If I gave you 10 million shillings, what would you do with it? <laughs> oh, hands have started coming up now. Now I'm addressing your need. Eh? Oh, you're, below, you, you're, you're above a, a million shillings. You don't fall on this side. Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry for underestimating your... Yes. You'll buy a home. A good home. Uh -huh. Anyone else? A million, uh, 10 million shillings? I can see some of you looking at me as if I, I, I have still not gotten to your level. <laughs> uh -huh. 10 million. 
anyone here who feels they have a plan. Let me just up it just a little bit, just a little bit. If I gave you a billion shillings, what would you do with it? She would relocate. She, she, she would run away from her relatives. <laughs> you, saw, you saw the guy who, who won the lottery in the U.S. Was it in the U.S. the other day? And showed up to receive his check in a mask. Because he doesn't want his friends and relatives figuring out who this is. Huh? What would you do with a billion shillings? Yes. From there you would, you go blank. You plan. So you don't have a plan. <laughs> yes. You'd start a foundation, a children's home, uh-huh. Paul, I want to give you a billion. Uh -huh. You'd sit and plan. So right now you don't you don't have a plan for a billion. <laughs> you haven't dreamt that far. You are not intent. Okay. Uh -huh. Daktari, you would be confused. Uh -huh. You don't have a plan for it. What would you do with a billion shillings? Invest it, at, invest it where? You don't know yet. Uh -huh. Yes. Nilete <laughs> tututajua. <laughs> eh? Why is this important? It's important because we say that money changes people. Now, I know if I ask the question, if you know someone who was changed by money, almost all hands would go up because we all know someone who was changed by money. Is that true? But does money really change people? You feel it changes people. Would you change if you got that kind of money? Maybe you haven't gotten it. Eh? Not necessarily. So let me ask this question. Would you want as a person in your character to be changed by money? Sorry? Depends on the change. Sorry? It reveals who you truly are on the inside. Eh? I think I have said this before. You remember when we were kids and we were playing and someone does something mean to you, what you would tell them? Where were Unijui? Do people around you really know you? Do you even know yourself? I guess most of us wouldn't want to be changed by money. But also, most of us don't plan not to be changed by money. And yet we pray God to give us money. So umeanza kujua kwa nini maombi yako haijajibiwa bado? First of all, you don't know what you will do with it. And secondly, maybe you're not stable enough in your character. 
to be changed by money. I, I just want you to see, I want us to walk through the scriptures and explore some of the things that God says about money and money influencing our character and our behavior. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 10 to 20. If you may, let's go there together. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God failing to observe his commands and his laws. Please turn down the monitors just a little bit. Otherwise, verse 12, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, when your herds and your flock, and let us translate this into today. What are our herds and flocks? It's the fine things. It's our means of production because Herds and flocks in those days were a means of production. The land and the flock represented what is our work today. When your herds and flock grow large, your silver and gold increase. Silver and gold represent investment. When your investments increase and you have and what you have is multiplied. You have become productive. The things that you have are multiplying. Then your heart will become proud. And you will forget the Lord your God. Who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness. That thirsty and waterless land. With, the, with its venomous nets and scorpions, he brought you water out of a hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known. To humble you so that in the end it might go well with you. You see why the Lord takes us through wilderness. Why the Lord takes us through the desert. Why the Lord takes us through scarcity and lack. It's so that he can humble us. And he's not just having fun with us. But he's humbling us so that it might go well with us. God is doing it for you. God is not doing it for fun. God is not doing it to show off. God is doing it for your own good. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember verse 18, and we have read this before. The preacher uh, Steve has read this before. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Verse 19, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you. So you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. Look at it. God is telling us he has given us a promise. Steve talked about the promise of Abraham that God says I will bless you and you will be a blessing to many nations. And we as the children of God also are a part of the promise of Abraham. And so God has got every intent to bless us, to increase us to multiply us and to establish us. But then from verse 18 he says, be careful. Remember the Lord your God, 
Remember where whatever you have comes from. Remember who it is that gives you the ability. And Steve said something that I find very true and very good. That it's not about your own ability. It is not about your education. It is not about your family background. It is not about your connections. It's got nothing to do with you. It has got everything to do with God's favor over your life. And so you need to remember that all the days of your life. Because if you forget it, then you begin walking on the path of destruction. You're setting yourself up. For a curse. I wish to bring our attention on the things that destroy many people. Now we are preparing ourselves to receive the blessing of God. We are preparing ourselves to be inheritors together with Abraham on the promise of God. But we do not want to inherit this promise. We do not want to receive the things that God has intended to give to us, and then they destroy us. Like we have seen people around us get destroyed. Some people have received wealth, and their lives have turned chaotic. Money destroys more people than lack of it does. Money destroys more people than lack of it does. When we receive wealth, a lot of times, instead of it becoming a blessing, it becomes a curse. And I just want us to, to walk together through the journey of receiving wealth from God. When money gets into our pockets, and for those of us who are salaried, every end month or somewhere around there, money comes into our pockets. What does that money begin to do to you? Sorry? You very true. It all of a sudden becomes very hot and dusty and tiring to walk or catch a matatu. So what do you do? Ye yesterday I was talking to one of us uh, who owns an Uber and he was telling uh, he was telling me business becomes good from around twenty fifth to 15th. So what she's saying is very true. Uber people start celebrating when you get paid. Why does, why does your behavior change? Oh, okay. Yes. Many of us don't use Uber. We drive. Why is it that from 25th still to around 10th to 15th there is more traffic than from 15th to 25th. All of a sudden, cars get fuel and we have places to go. And people to meet. Kujirudishia <laughs> shukrani. Money begins to talk to you. Money, by the way, when money is out there, it doesn't have a voice. But when it gets into your pocket or into your bank account, it develops a voice. When money gets into our pocket or our bank account, it has a tendency of developing a very strong, sweet voice, it becomes seductive and is irresistible. All of a sudden, everything around you rotates around the money that you have in your bank account. 
it begins to tell you how powerful it is and how it can make you invincible. I grew up in Machakos town and uh, there was this family that was very wealthy, very, very wealthy. Their father used to be a brewer and he had made a lot of money. And so when he passed on, his sons inherited the wealth. One of them called Wanderi. Wanderi bought himself, he went to Diti Dobi and bought himself a brand new E-class. Then, that was in the early 90s, Wanderi bought himself a brand new Benz, Diti Dobi. And Wanderi overseeing some of his father's businesses, he would make a phone call. Anaoda nyama kitengela. Anasema wekeleni nyama kitengela. Asubui. Na anaitisha ugali kutoka kitui. You're laughing at Wanderi, but some of you do such things. Just, just in a different way. As in, you, you all of a sudden become invincible. You're walking around and you're wondering, why are people not noticing who I am? Can't you, don't you know that I have been paid? So the ladies, think about what happens. When you get a house help, when she comes to your house, very naive, seated at the edge of the chair, very humble, you give her her first salary. When she was coming to you, she was desperate. You pay her her first salary. By the third salary, her value has... No, let's stop talking about them. Let's talk about you. You remember when you tarmacked for several months, for, or was it years, looking for a job, and you told God, if you give me this job, and then you got the job, and you're so good, you're so hardworking, you get to work on time, and your boss knows that we have hit a jackpot. This is the employee that we have been waiting for in this organization. And then you get your third salary. Then what happens? Ah, um dosi si um tumpoa. Ana ni bebaje. Mbona ana nchukulia vibaya hivyo. And you develop discontent. Why? You develop an overinflated sense of self-importance. Because all of a sudden, your value has gone up. Kumbe, I am worth that much. Why? Because money has started talking to you. It has started telling you, you're not the poor guy you used to be. You're no longer needy. You're invincible. The world needs to notice you. The world needs to know who you are. Money. Will do to you what the devil did to Jesus Christ. It will take you to the top of the mountain. And show you the splendor of the world. It will move you from toy market. To? To LC Waikiki. No, LC Waikiki. Eh? Zara. It, it will move you from shopping at Wangige Market. All of a sudden, zucchini becomes 
Because money is telling you, I, if your class yako, it speaks to you. It takes you to the top of the mountain. It shows you the world of possibilities around you. When you used to dream small, all of a sudden, your dreams become bigger. From the top of the mountain, this is the world before you. You can pick whatever you want if you bow down and worship it. I'm an mimi too. See, when you're broke, you're sober. You know where to go for shopping. You know where the cheapest things are. Yeah? Not even when you're broke. When, when you just have enough to live by. Yeah? You, you know all the wholesale shops. You don't, you don't, go, to, you don't go to Carrefour. You're sober. You're able to plan. You're able to set your agenda right. You have plans on how... Think about it. Today, the amount of money you make on average in a month, you have planned for all of it. Is that true? So why is the one billion shillings confusing you? When you have enough, you're able to plan for it. Wait until you get extra cash. Things begin to call you by name. You're walking around. And the Range Rover seems to be calling you. Runda starts calling your name. From experiences that promise us pleasure to material things that all of a sudden seem like we can't live without. Something that you have lived for your 20 or 30 something years without all of a sudden becomes impossible to live without. All of a sudden you notice that the house you have been living in very comfortably does not have tiles. All of a sudden, you notice that your clothes are getting mold by, for, by hanging them next to the wall. And so you realize, Ayakumbe inyumba ikuagi na wardrobe. Six years later. Because money is talking to you. And you feel like you can't live without these things. Money becomes restless in your pocket. Huh? Those loose molecules that we studied in chemistry. Uh, money becomes restless in your pocket. You start losing sleep over things you initially thought you would never need. I want us to watch a video. I guess all of us have seen this video. We've maybe laughed about it. But think of how true this video is to many of us. How does the money that you get affect the decisions that you make? Whether you're broke or not, or you're wealthy, you will live by certain principles. The principles should never change. The application of it can change, but the principles should remain steadfast. Because I can tell you this, your income will grow. And so you need to plan yourself for that day. Number two, resist anxiety. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of much more value than they? 
Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. And Steve talked about this. It's about God's favor. It doesn't matter where you are, where you come from. It doesn't matter who you are. When God's promise and favor is upon you, things will begin to happen in your life. And so you do not need to try and carry yourself like you are assisting God in taking care of yourself because you cannot. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. What does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? It means to live by the purposes of God. Seeking to understand. How you can live in accordance with the will of the father. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. One of the things that destroys us is worrying. It is anxiety, and anxiety comes with fear. Anxiety actually represents fear, and fear says to God, I do not trust you enough to take care of me because I don't think that you know me or you have the capacity to take care of me. Fear is an insult to God. If you're a parent of a young child, think about it. If, that, if, if one day you woke up and that child got out, got out of bed and they are so worried and you're looking at them and asking them what is it and they are telling you I want to get myself a job and you ask them why do you want to get a job and they tell you because I don't think you can afford to pay my school fees, I don't think you can afford to pay rent, I don't think you can afford to buy food for me. What would you feel? Wouldn't you feel insulted by that child? God takes care of us. We do not need to worry. We do not need to fear about our lives. We just need to trust him. Worrying about the future instills fear in us and makes us feel like we do like if we do not accumulate enough, we will become destitute and that's the story of this country that's the story of many people in the world they keep accumulating and accumulating and accumulating you think about it how much money is enough people accumulate so much and they just throw it away in tax havens and they cannot do anything without that money while other people are impoverished, hoarding, 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 hoarding. Let me rebuke us openly. How many pairs of shoes do you have? When was the last time you wore all of them? How many pairs of dresses do you have? When was the last time you wore them? How many, how many toys have you bought for your child? How many of them does the child use? That is where hoarding begins. Don't you ever think that you're any better than these people who keep hoarding money and wealth for themselves when you hoard the little things in life. Because when God gives you that wealth, you will do exactly the same with it. Hoarding is a statement of fear. It is a statement that if I do not accumulate as much, I will become poor tomorrow. Things go wrong. I lived with a friend when I was in college. My friend came from a family of 12 children. <laughs> it's not you, Paul. <laughs> My friend came from a family of 12 children. And they were not very well off. And so he, he would tell me 
you had to be there during dinner time. If you're not there, there is no dinner for you. Hakuna mtu atakuwekea chakula. Whatever has been prepared inaisha. So kama huko saa ya kukula, by the time chakula ive, mahali uko utajisort. So when college we decide, hey, let's let's rent a house together. So we rented a car house together. Now this guy loved cooking. Festus alikuwa anapenda mashakura. Because for him he grew up in a setting it's about the quantity of food, not the quality of food. Alikuwa anapika na sufuria kubwa. You would walk into our single room house and think wa kwani mko na wageni. And so one time I had a conversation with him and I asked him, "Hi, ni nini?" You know he told me, "I grew up with so much scarcity that I like seeing food so that I can feel safe. When I don't see as much food, najua nitalala nja." And sometimes our experiences can make us begin hoarding things. You do things that are absolutely unnecessary by reason of fear. You feel like you will become destitute. But it is God who takes care of us. Let us be reminded of that. And so let us rid ourselves of anxiety and fear. Fear of the future, fear of the unknown, fear of what can go wrong. All these fears blind us to the power and the promise of God and make us believe that we are on our own. Brothers and sisters, God has sent me to you today to tell you this that you are of much more worth than the birds of the air and the flowers of the field that you are not on your own god is concerned about your welfare if you trust him he will take care of you number 3 be content why should you be content because you will never have enough you will never have enough. Anyone here who can say that they have enough? I'll tell you why you would say that you don't ha- that you have enough because you haven't seen different things. Wanasema mwenye hajatembea eh he who has not traveled things the mother is the best cook. And so a lot of times we are only content by with what we know. But when you are exposed to things that you never knew existed. Think about it. Si ulikuja You came to this city kutoka Ushago. Eh, soja. Alikuwa anaitwa soja, soja motoa. <laughs> soja motoa came to form 1. Tulikuwa tumeambiwa twende na viatu pea moja ya black, rubber shoes ukuja na box soja mutoa alikuja na viatu akaingia kwa ofisi ya deputy headmaster for admission first day in school deputy headmaster akamwangalia akamuuliza eh hey, kijana wapi viatu soja akachukua funguo akafungua box akaonyesha viatu ndio hizi and we thought that that was over in the evening soja went to shower akaangalia watu wanavaa slippers E, akaenda kuingia kwa bathroom akaona tiles akatoa slippers akaingia kwa bafu that is what he knew some of you when you came to this city ulipokuja university you remember your first dinner dress silikuwa silikuwa night dress Nairobi imekusafisha imekupaka mafuta now you know better and you desire better <laughs> you will never have enough there will always be more there will always be better that's the world we live in this past week samsung re- re- released their new phone 
And so you, you thought that you had the best Samsung. Now it's obsolete. Imezeka. It's no longer anything to talk about. There will always be more. There will always be better. So you must learn to be content with what you have. Just accept that and learn to live conscious of that reality. The number of things you can have will keep growing by the day. Maybe even by the hour as you discover new things that you've never, you never even knew existed and new things that are made for your enjoyment. Think about it. You walk into the supermarket today, you will definitely see something that you have never seen. I was talking to someone yesterday and I was sharing the, why I miss Nakumat. Nakumat, every time you went shopping at the end of the month, you would find a new breakfast cereal that you have never seen. There will always be something that you have never seen. There will always be something new. You have to get to a place where you say, this will do it for me. This is enough for me. This is what I need. I might keep changing it over time. If it's a car, I will replace it over time. I will not try to get the newest, to get the best, to get the biggest, to get the most technologically advanced. I will only try. I will only live with what I need. Does it say that you shouldn't enjoy yourself? No, enjoy yourself. Number four, do not get attached. God gives us things to serve a certain purpose in life. Do not get attached. Allow me to be a Pentecostal preacher. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, don't get attached. We read, you will not, you never came with anything into this world and you will not live with anything. Things come and go. Things come for a season and they go. Don't get attached to things. When you get attached to things, you're telling God that you don't trust him to take care of you and give you what you need for tomorrow. And that's a perfect example shown in the scriptures. God gave the children of Israel manna in the wilderness. If you kept it for the next day, it would go bad. If we get attached to things, we lose our ability to effectively serve God's purpose and reduce our lives to accumulation of things. Let us free ourselves from the love of money and things so that we can love people. Don't get attached. When the, when the season of something is over, move on. When something goes, let it go and tell God, thank you for the time I had it. Thank you for giving it to me. My hands are now open for the new season that you have prepared for me. Think about what you have today. You thank God for it. And you look back and say, but when I got this, I realized I was shortchanging myself. God always has something better for you. God gives us things. Let me finish with this statement. God gives us things to serve his purpose. 